I saw this crystal tester kit on eBay and thought it would be great to take to hand fast and such while hunting for crystals. Like many cheap kits out of China, it doesn't come with any assembly instructions, but since all components are marked clearly on the board, it is easy to assemble. So I thought I would show how I put a kit like this together. The first step is to lay out all the components to make sure everything is there. Group common parts together to make it easier to find when you start assembly. Look everything over to ensure there are no damaged or missing parts. You can see the PCB has every component location marked. A good way to proceed is to start with mounting the smallest components first then work your way up in size. Since this is a small board, you can also start with the most complex to solder and work your way across the board. A good piece of equipment to have is a PCB vise. It will hold the board in place, making it easy to position the PCB for soldering. There are many to choose from. I've been using this one for years and will leave a link to it in the description. I decided to start with the character displays. You want to make sure the legs are straight. Take your time with this so you don't break them. This kit has a lot of bent pins due to bad shipping. Now I can mount the displays. I start by aligning the pins on one side then slowly align each pin on the other side until the display slides into place. I then flip the board over and start soldering them in place. After all the pins are soldered, I inspect my solder joints and trim the excess leads. Next, I'll mount the IC holder. You need to line up the notch in the holder with the picture on the board. I like to solder a pin on opposite corners so it stays flush with the board while I solder the rest of the pins. Moving on to the row of 1K resistors. You can use the color codes or use an ohm meter to verify the correct value. I bend each leg into shape, insert it into the holes, and then while holding it in place, slightly bend the leads so it stays in place. Once I have all eight of them inserted, I will flip the board over and solder each one, then trim the leads. Next, I'll start with the 104 capacitor and work my way to the right of the board following the same procedure I used on the resistors. Then I'll repeat that to the left. When inserting the transistors, make sure the flat side of the transistors matches the width of print on the board. For the trimmer, match the trimmer flat edge with the print on the board. When soldering the power connector, make sure to fill the holes with solder. You want them completely full. Sometimes on diodes, it is hard to see the black band that marks the cathode. You can use your multimeter to determine the cathode by placing the meter in the diode position. The cathode will be the lead that the negative probe is on when you see a meter reading. I will finish up by looking the board over inspecting all my solder joints once again to make sure everything is good. You can always reheat a joint and add more solder if needed. Lastly, I will insert the IC into the holder. There is also a notch on the IC that should line up with the notch on the holder. I start by inserting one side of pins, then gently squeeze the other side to align the pins until all pins are aligned and it starts to go into place. Then gently push it in evenly applying light pressure. To test operation, I connect leads to the outer pins of the 3-pin connector to a known good crystal. I will use a 9-volt battery to apply power. While not 100% accurate, this little device will show me approximate value and that the crystal will oscillate. Next, I'll find a case for it. Make better leads and battery holder, and it will make a great portable tester to take to half-fast or to test crystals on the bench. Thanks for watching.